It's summertime. Let the adventures begin, but let's remember safety first. Don't let distracted driving ruin your summer. Parents, your kids are watching, so put the phone down. That message can wait until you arrive. Be aware and alert for other drivers, the work zones, and roadside workers. Let's make this summer one for the books by cutting out distracted driving. Stay updated on travel conditions this summer by downloading the MDOT Traffic mobile app and visiting mdottraffic.com. MDOT presents the Extra Mile Podcast. Welcome in to another edition of the Extra Mile Podcast Legislative Session presented by the Mississippi Department of Transportation. I'm Paul Catool, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Will Kraft. And uh, last episode with MDOT Chief of Staff Jeff Ely, go check that out. We teased a legislative wrap-up episode, and that's today. We've got an interesting backdrop, and we also have the Executive Director of the Mississippi Department of Transportation, Brad White, here. Thank you so much for making time for us. Thank you. Sir. So let's I just... thought I sweated enough during the legislative session, but y'all are going to make me sweat today. <laughs> back to back. We'll just jump into it with the question, the question, uh, burning question. So you're talking a lot about funding, recurring revenue. How did that go? Well, we didn't get any recurring revenue, but we did have a good session. Um, uh, we maintain what we've done the last three sessions, which is having an earmark free bill. All of our special funds came to us intact. Uh, they gave us a supplemental appropriation, which would allow for another 250 million in capacity construction projects. Uh, the 40 million match that we needed, another 10 million investment in the strategic multimodal fund. So overall, we'll end up with almost a $1.5 billion budget. About 800 million of that uh, will be the federal funds that we've received. So all in all, we, we had a good clean bill that'll get us through another year, uh, but we still fell short of the recurring revenue. And, and in my opinion, that is the overarching need that we have. And, uh, but we did go up the mountain, stake a flag, and we'll come back next year and start all over again. There you go. So do you, <clears throat> you think we, we, it's not the end of that conversation, right? We set the table for that moving forward. That recurring revenue conversation is going to keep going. Right. I think we started the conversation. I mean, that was the first session that's ever been talked about. Anybody that's ever followed the legislative process, very rarely does anything happen uh, overnight in one session. So I think it'll take some time. There were a lot of competing interest in the session this time. You had all of the Medicaid expansion debate. You had all of the school formula, funding formula debate, uh, among other things. Uh, but hopefully uh, in the next session we'll be able to have a, find us a champion within the legislature that will talk about this core function of government and the need to have recurring revenue in order to plan out properly all of our construction and maintenance projects. You know, it's hard to do that when you don't know what you're going to have the next year in the way of funding. So uh, it's going to be key, uh, but I do think we have everybody's attention. I do think it was part of a discussion. It's just going to have to be an ongoing discussion. Yeah. What about some of that money you just mentioned going to big projects? I know it is one time, but they will they will move the needle hopefully uh, on some of the bigger projects. I think I-55 being one of those, and there may be another. Highway 7 uh, in Lafayette County will be funded now fully. Uh, we got close in fully funding the I-55, the first phase of I-55 in DeSoto County, but I believe that we'll be able to make ends meet, hopefully, with that. Um, and then um, that'll move all the other projects on the list up. So next on the list will be I-55 in Madison to Gluckstadt, uh, Highway 25 in Flowood, uh, all the way down to I-59 in Forest County and, and others. So hopefully we'll continue moving. I, unfortunately, with a lack of funding and the rising cost, that there will be some projects that we had on the capacity list that I expect to be dropping off of that in order to devote what revenue we have to uh, building out those projects that we've gotten far enough along to to get to that stage as well as divert funds back into maintenance. Uh, but hopefully that will get people's attention and show that we're, we're being serious about what our needs are and, uh, and I feel like that we'll find a solution to that. There you go. Uh, perhaps an underrated success uh, during the 2024 legislative session the uh, design build bill that was yeah. unanimously passed correct it went through uh, clearly this is something that governor reeves was kind enough to tout in his state of the state address if you remember at the beginning of the session uh, an aspect of this was used in the economic development package it was passed for the marshall county project early in the session and so that kind of as you said set the table 
uh, that when our bill finally came up before the legislature, it sailed through with, with very little opposition. So this would be another tool in the toolbox that the professionals here at MDOT have uh, to try and deliver the product to the taxpayer in a way that we think will save time and money by trying to avert a lot of the risk and mitigate that risk out on the front end of the projects. Excellent. Talking about keeping on, <clears throat> keeping on talking about some of those funding things that we have uh, working for us. Uh, Intermodal was once again funded, ERBR once again as well, I believe. Yeah, 30 million for ERBR, 10 million for the Strategic Multimodal Fund. So it's not as much funds as they gave us last year, but it's still enough to get some money out to help some of the needs that we have, both on the local bridge system uh, through ERBR as well as through our uh, ports and airports and, and rail needs around the state. Great programs. I think we, you know, got a lot done. Uh, maybe not everything we wanted, but a successful session. It's a step in the right direction. There we go. Good, stuff. Good uh, progress. Paul, uh, before we get to that next question, they're talking about some of our capacity projects. That is certainly a theme for this year. We got a little train activity in the background, but uh, capacity projects started last year. We're still moving along, right? On all those. Yeah. We just awarded uh, Highway 15 in Tippa County. Uh, Highway 49 in Harrison County was awarded uh, at the end of this last calendar year. Uh, we're looking forward to Highway 19 over in Neshoba County. We still have the flowers interchange on uh, I-20 in Warren County. Uh, Highway 90 down in Jackson County uh, that will be coming up. And it seems like I may be uh, missing one. But now, of course, we have Highway 7 in Lafayette County, I-55 in DeSoto. So there's a total of about eight projects. Oh, the West Rankin Parkway in Rankin County, long-awaited project that will be able to be moved. Uh, so we've got about eight projects that thanks to the legislature's investment the last couple of years that we'll be able to bring to fruition and and see being built and that's not those aren't just you know repaving those are huge no, huge these projects. are true capacity projects bypasses uh widening of lanes at two lane into four lane a brand new road and in, in some areas a brand new interchange so yeah they're significant projects awesome Love there that. you go yeah. well uh, before we get into some fun questions, Any anything you want to close with on the 2024 session, any kind of message you want to get out there? No, the, the only other thing that I would mention that we're real proud about, which is always a priority of, of the MDOT leadership, is to continue to take care of our staff, our, our the, the MDOT family, the team that carries out all the work day in and day out. Uh, I believe we're in a good position to continue adjusting salaries uh, around the agency. Maybe not to the level that we would like, but we'll still be able to go down that, that road and uh, continue to try to improve the pavement of the, the people that do the work that, that meets the mission of MDOT. So that was one of those things that we fight for every year, and, and I'm real proud that we're still going to be able to take advantage of the SEC squared that the State Personnel Board does. and. Uh, Appreciate Lisa and Terrence and all the work that they do, and Earl and Jeff, and trying to put this plan together. And we'll be meeting soon to, to try to look at implementing that come July. Good deal, good deal. Well, well, let's hit it. Yeah, the fun questions. What everybody tunes in for? Yeah, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, but we do. Uh, Brad will always uh, ask you these same questions. I don't know if you have any new answers, but uh, I'm sure you can come up with one off the top of your head. If you don't. Food and music, I'll let Paul take the music one, but uh, places to eat. Uh, we like to eat as a people, as a podcast. Uh, you been anywhere new lately? No. As you well know, I'm a bad <laughs> creature of habit. I go to Martin's, I go to Scrooge's, I go to uh, El Elvie's, is that the name Elvis. of the place over here by Manship oh, yeah. for breakfast meetings, one of the bre best breakfasts in Jackson, I believe, Uh But no, I'm a pretty big creature of habit, so not a lot of new there. Elvie's, though, that was, I've been there one time for breakfast. It, uh, it knocked breakfast. my socks off. Good, good stuff. Breakfast. It's good. No stalkers. I live about 50 feet away. It's really hard not to go there <laughs> every day. But I will give a shout out to Chef Hunter Evans over there. It's a food podcast in addition to politi political podcasts. They are buying uh, the Mayflower and oh, going oh, to wow. renovate that. Know that. So speaking yeah. of the legislative session, I'm sure there will be some legislators, some uh, policy people over there next session checking it out. So, sure. yeah. so good deal. Uh, great answer there. All right, Brad. So maybe a repeat answer with the the f familiarity but any new music anything you've been listening to uh, I still uh, everybody that I have on my phone mostly are dead uh, George well, Jones dead. you know well Willie Nelson's still alive still Raw like Haggard all of that so I still like kind of classic country and classic rock and some of that stuff so uh, y'all make me sound like a boring person but no, no, no way I like what I like have you been to Love the it. Brandon Amphitheater no no all right so shout out Brandon we got to get our yeah. boss over there Check it out. As Ely mentioned, they do have some really great shows. Ely goes a good bit. I he think. does. He likes crowds more than I do. 
<laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Got to hide out after the session for sure. That's right. There we go. Well, Brad, uh, thank you uh, for all your hard work, the MDOT staff for uh, you know a, real, a successful legislative session. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yes, sir. All right, we'll close things out there. Thank you to our listeners, our viewers, for tuning into the Extra Mile podcast. You can watch and listen to episodes by visiting goemdot.com forward slash the extra mile. Follow us on social media at Mississippi DOT is the handle. We want to give a big thanks to Drew Hall. He really does most of the work for this show behind the scenes. Thank you, sir. And remember to drive smart out there on Mississippi highways. Thank you for subscribing to the Extra Mile Podcast. Help us out by leaving a review and a five-star rating wherever you download the show. After leaving a review, slide on into our DMs over on social media at Mississippi DOT and let us know. As a thank you, we have compiled a Google Map list of all of our guests' favorite spots to eat on Mississippi highways. It is our gift to you. Seriously, you guys are the best. We could not do the show without you, and we greatly appreciate the support. Remember... Drive smart out there on Mississippi highways.